Are you as a board or executive team attempting to start your ESG journey and don't know what, where, or how to start this? You're not alone. I've put this 15 minute video to describe at a very high level, some of the concepts to consider and a roadmap to commence this journey for you as a business. Hi, I'm Steven. I hold a portfolio of roles, both executive and non-executive director roles. I'm also a board level coach specializing in strategy, transformation, leadership, and governance. And I absolutely love working with businesses to help them level up. Let's take a moment to think about the business and economic environment. There is a big shift in our economy, the rise of ESG and circular economy. Now this enables opportunities for growth and scaling your business and not just compliance. And to help what circular economy means, well, it is a model of production and consumption which involves sharing, leasing, reusing, repairing, refurbishing, and recycling existing materials and products as long as possible. In this way, the life cycle of products is extended. This applies across sectors. In practice, it implies reducing waste to a minimum. Circularity goes to the heart of many of the challenges brought on by global pandemic, the needs to rationalize operations, rapidly transition to digitalize, to construct more localized procurement and supply chains, and to build resilience. Addressing them with circularity as a guiding principle brings benefit to new business models and opportunities that can add value and provide a competitive advantage for your business. The question is no longer whether these global challenges matter to the financial services sector, or to the oil and gas, or to any other sector for that matter, but how these companies are addressing them. And you can start this journey. We are living in an era where impactful and meaningful relationships across the entire ecosystem matter. Societal needs and business opportunities are coming together to transform the way companies formulate strategy drive performance and report results. Stakeholder groups, including consumers, employees, and investors are demanding sustainable and responsible action from business. We have evolved over the decades from generating just products and services until the 90s to being customer centric in the 2000s, and then to be even more innovative and leveraging digital as an enabler for transformation and growth. This now leads us to the next stage, which is ESG integration. Now, whilst ESG is not a completely new topic, ESG integration is a strategic approach wherein companies embed environmental, social governance considerations into their journey of digital business transformation and business strategy. Because they are connected, it is understood to have a positive influence on the stakeholder value when you as a business showcase how you drive business value with ESG and sustainability. Your business, like every business, is deeply intertwined with environmental, social and governance ESG concerns. It makes sense, therefore, that a strong ESG proposition as part of your ongoing change and transformation can create value. So let's briefly consider the individual elements of ESG. There are three pillars, and several of these are not new, but what is important is where you are in the journey or awareness, definition, execution, and embedding to drive increased maturity on each of the following pillars environmental pillar, social pillar, and governance pillar. And there are sub elements within each that you will need to evaluate. So ESG related risks are becoming increasingly important considerations for businesses, institutional investors, and asset managers because of increased fears about climate change, high profile scams, and damaging corporate governance failures. Bank of America examined the impact on stock prices of companies in the S&P 500 index, the main U.S. equity market benchmark, and recorded 20, 24 controversies related to accounting scandals, data breaches, and sexual harassment cases 
and other ESG issues, it found that these 24 ESG controversies together resulted in market value losses of about 534 billion. Think for a moment about those businesses that were impacted negatively by these controversies. Now, what about your business? What risks or mechanisms do you have in place to identify and manage? But wait, the exciting part is that they are winners and you want to be in that demography. So you see ESG integration is starting to sound like an important undertaking. As a business organization, you may be wondering what is in it for us? In fact, there are some compelling reasons for starting on the journey to a more integrated ESG journey. For example, for businesses, companies ranked highly for ESG have been shown to perform better than average. Uh, intangible assets such as brand reputation are growing in importance. So when hiring or retaining staff, ESG can be a strong motivator. Employees want to work for companies that demonstrate commitment to making the world a better place. Borrowing money can be cheaper if you perform strongly on ESG. Consumer sentiment is increasingly interlinked with ESG concerns. Having the potential to impact the bottom line via greater efficiency, environmental, social, and governance matters can directly impact your top line. Often heard in today's boardroom and C-suite is a mixture of anxiety and enthusiasm about environmental, social, and governance ESG issues. So what risks are we sitting on? The leaders and investors are asking because pressure for business growth and ESG disclosures are just around the corner. Other questions like how do we measure and manage them when there are no common standards? Where should we focus? when the list of potential issues is a mile long, and critically, which is where the enthusiasm comes in with the C-suite or board is a question, as we take a hard look at our business, what opportunities can we identify to solve big problems and create value in new ways, considering the external market forces? So therein lies a big question, where are you and where do you begin? So understanding how you are performing and rank against your peers and defining the key, key principles to underpin your vision is key to setting that right priority and executing against them. There are opportunities to take on the build of incremental innovation and change or radically build new business models related to ESG or wider transformation as a whole or in increments in an agile way. So the answer to these questions is inter interrelated, strategic reinvention, leadership drive, and ultimately wholesale or subcomponents of business transformation. Not only are those dimensions interdependent, but each of them can create momentum that helps fuel the others. In industries as varied as financial services, oil and gas, consumer goods, telecommunications, manufacturing and hospitality, and other services, Companies are striving to build trust among and deliver sustained outcomes to their stakeholders. They're doing so by tackling these three imperatives or challenges. Strategic invention is to rethink basic strategic questions about where and how to compete and how to integrate and to keep the program separate. Board and CXO leadership and cross-functional collaboration where senior leaders have a critical role to play in driving this agenda in the areas of empowering stakeholders, enabling change systems and transforming the business. Business transformation, which is not separate from ongoing digital transformation endeavors that you might have, but which will inform and build on them, redefining their context and their purpose. So you see, Competing business priorities, reporting standards, and leadership commitments hold ESG back, even in companies that prioritize ESG issues. So it is really important to tie this into the overall strategy and growth agenda, and it's never too late. 
Remember, client expectations and regulations have changed at a pace and to a depth that couldn't have been anticipated. What was market leading two or five years ago is market baseline today. Many organizations who already had plans to evolve their change, transformation and ESG capabilities are realizing they need to accelerate and aim higher in what they are trying to achieve. Those businesses who will remain relevant are investing in transforming their whole or parts of their organization. And it's crucial that those investments target the right outcomes and achieve them efficiently across your corporate strategy, your clients, the investments and regulations. Building these interventions and strategies will enable your business to experience a new future state with your customers and your wider stakeholders in the ecosystem alongside with you. So again, where do you begin? Well, if you don't know where you're going, every road will lead to nowhere. You need to understand where you are today and define how you want to differentiate yourself from your peers with input and buy-in across your core functions from the outset. Regulation, what is on the agenda of regulators and policy makers in your jurisdictions? What regulations are your clients subject to? What voluntary codes and industry standards are you signed up to or should you be? What are the practical implications for your business? Then from a client's perspective, what are your clients asking for now? What do you think they will want in the future? What products and propositions are you offering? How are you relationship managers engaging with your clients? Investments. How does sustainability feature in your investment philosophy? How is ESG influencing decision making? This then leads to a maturity journey from just complying to actually leading in these efforts. As a business, the top teams and board need to be aligned and aware. There are therefore some arguments for a fully integrated approach to ESG. The CXO and board has a strong role to enable this approach and focus on five key themes and to build steps. So for example, number one, identify your company's ESG related strengths, risks and weaknesses. Number two, analyze and you know, evaluate the current state of all ESG factors in your organization. And number three, set priorities. Number four, define clear metrics and report on your ESG progress and choose the right people, tools and processes to integrate ESG. Achieving your organization's ambitions in the next stages of transformation with ESG will be a journey. While there will be some quick wins for most organizations, this will be a multi-year journey impacting the entire organization. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Now is the time to focus on these six areas, which include number one, leadership environment and development. Number two, business transformation and modernization. Number three, cost optimization. Number four, decarbonization. Number five, customer experience and demands. And number six, risk management. This requires a coherent roadmap that encompasses these seven steps provided on the screen and a set of principles such as designing the target state ESG and responsible investment operating model with clear accountabilities and responsibilities, defining your branding and market strategy, agreeing the levels of alignment, creating a realistic implementation roadmap, mobilizing nimble governance to successfully guide the transformation. And it's important to leverage an ESG framework. There are ESG transformation frameworks that's available that would enable you to structure your journey and address the immediate priorities, challenges, and long-term vision. And that would enable you to pick and choose the areas that you need to focus on 
and how to actually accommodate the challenges and bring about your priorities and deliver them in the best possible way. In line with the earlier messages in this video, right now there are three opportunities you can focus on as a board and executive team. Number one, transforming the business. Number two, empowering the stakeholders. Number three, enhancing or changing the systems. So I'll conclude shortly, but before that, there are five key takeaways from this video. Number one is integrating ESG and leadership development, business transformation into investment decisions, and the processes for becoming standard for long term. Number two, effective management of ESG issues and opportunities, which will lead to commercial successes. Number three, linking ESG to strategy, the business model, risk management, and governance provides important benefits in relation to internal efficiencies and stakeholder confidence. Number four, it's imperative that companies like yourselves demonstrate how they have identified material ESG issues. Materiality is important. Number five, business successes in the 21st century will be defined by more than just financial profit. Ethical issues impact economic outcomes. So our value add to you is in five areas, all tailored to your unique situation priorities. One, transformation and change or post integration. Number two, high growth leadership alignment at all levels. Number three, building and scaling the CXO functions and the businesses in parallel. Number four, board advisory, representation as, an ex as a non-executive, but also building the boards to perform better. And combined with all of this, that sits in the middle is strategic alignment. And finally, I'm Stephen Paul, your main point of contact to help your business grow. We will work with you, connect you to the wider ecosystem and strategic partners within the ESG ecosystem and build a better business for you. So contact me and we will take it from there. Thank you.